Howdy folks, Alan here again with uh, today's news. I watch uh, China in focus on YouTube a lot, you know, and they actually seem like they speak the truth. I'm going to bring you some stuff from them. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. For years, the U.S. has accused the Chinese Communist regime of infiltrating American soil in business, academia, the military, and governmental institutions. That's to get its hands on technology and boost its influence in American society. This week, a congressional aide is getting a pink slip over allegedly working for China. The aide Barbara Hamlet works for Representative Don Bayer. She allegedly reached out to several congressional staffers trying to arrange meetings on behalf of the Chinese embassy in Washington. According to the National Review, Hamlet was fired after her efforts were reported to the House Sergeant at Arms. In response, Senator Marco Rubio said in an email that the Chinese Communist Party wants to establish influence over our own government. I want to let you know that, you know, this is like the Trojan horse. You know, they sneak in, you know, and then they just bust out the horse and just infiltrate our country. You know, you can't trust China. You can't. Or Russia. The communists. In the months leading up to the midterm elections, Twitter says it has removed over 2,000 China-based accounts that stroke political division in the U.S. The accounts are accused of trying to weaken the country. Here's more. According to data Twitter released, the social media platform disrupted three China-based operations that tried to influence the midterm elections. The accounts amplified a range of politically polarizing issues, including allegations of voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Polarizing issues, including allegations of voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election and criticizing transgender people. Twitter said two of the three networks promoted MAGA messaging, while one praised President Biden. Another network of 1,900 accounts pushed narratives favorable to the Chinese regime. And I wanted to let you know that, you know, the reason Biden got in is to, uh, because the Chinese, you know, they got Biden in th through uh, uh, Twitter. They brainwashed the people on Twitter. Anybody using Twitter should just cut their account, you know. Chinese knew, knew that Biden wasn't, was not going to be a great president. He would screw up, and, and Chinese knows that, you know, they're pretty smart. Maga messaging, while one praised President Biden, another network of 1,900 accounts pushed narratives favorable to the Chinese regime in both the English and the Chinese language. Many accounts, for example, echo the Chinese regime's condemnation of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan this year. Twitter removed the accounts, saying they were violating rules against platform manipulation and spam. These accounts been located in the U.S. and China, and you know they're 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 influencing bad elections. Claimed to be located in the U.S., but Twitter said it discovered technical signals indicating that many were based in China. Some of the accounts attracted a large following. One of them had over 26,000 followers and received more than 400,000 likes before being taken down. You heard about Biden's son, right? He's evil. Biden is evil. You know, we got to stop this. We really do. Semiconductor giant is scaling down operations in China. This time, it's microchip maker Marvell Technology. The company confirmed that it's cutting research and development staff in China. Marvell's R&D center in China is its third largest after its operations in the Stop U.S. and Israel. China the decision would make Marvell the third American microchip company to cut its China operations this year. Earlier this year, U.S. Help microchip giant Micron said it would shut it's down a chip design do. operation in Shanghai. Another microchip manufacturer, Texas Instruments, also moved part of its R&D team from China to India. 
Marvell did not say how many staffers would be affected by the cuts. In a statement, it said the company is making changes to its global location strategy, which will result in the elimination of roles in China. The cut comes after Washington moves to cripple Beijing's access to advanced semiconductor technology. A month before the midterm election, the Biden administration announced sweeping sanctions. Under them, companies are banned from selling advanced chips to China if they're made with U.S. technology. Specifically, chips used in artificial intelligence and super You know, they're pushing Biden into this right critical before the to China's uh, military midterm election. Microchips function as the brains of modern electronics, from cars to supercomputers. Advanced microchips are essential for military gear. Washington is also on its way to barring U.S. persons from helping China's microchip development, unless they get a license. Though it remains to be seen how the impacts would play out. In the past, we need to Washington start making our own chips. A lot of licenses Stop making having China, China do it. Is a major market for US We're giving China our information, our Last military year, information. Over 60 percent of Qualcomm's revenue came from China. For Intel, China is its largest source of net revenue, about 26 percent. China is denying it operates police stations in the Netherlands. On Wednesday, Beijing officials said the offices are simply centers that help Chinese citizens Irish, renew documents. Ireland, uh, through this the comes one day Chinese after police the Dutch out. government ordered China to immediately close police stations in the country. Now, Netherlands is going to do it. Reports say they were used to monitor and harass Chinese dissidents. One piece of evidence comes from a Chinese dissident living in the Netherlands. He said representatives from the office had sought to pressure him to return to China. The Netherlands foreign minister says that although the stations do provide consular help, they do not have permission to offer it. He says that alone is enough to shut them down. Meanwhile, the ministry plans to take a deeper look at such activity. It will also reach out to other European Union countries, where sources say more Chinese police stations are located. The reports came in the wake of a September investigation by Spain-based in NGO China, Safeguard Defenders. It states China has 54 overseas police centers around the world, including the two in the Netherlands. It also said there's one in New York City and three in the UK. British police are investigating. The UK security minister vowed on Tuesday to step up work to prevent transnational repression. He added it would be unacceptable for a foreign nation to run a security apparatus in the UK. Now we turn to the Indo-Pacific, where Beijing's aggression appears to have Washington and Canberra forging closer links. Australian broadcaster ABC reported the U.S. is to send six B-52 bombers to the air base in Australia. Let's zoom in. The B-52 is a long-range heavy bomber capable of delivering nuclear weapon strikes. The U.S. Air Force has been rotating bombers through Australia for years. But sending as many we as six heavy bombers to seems to mark together. a big increase. It comes as the U.S. and Australia seek to boost military cooperation to counter Beijing's military activity, particularly near Taiwan. An expert says the move is sending a signal to China, warning Beijing not to launch an assault on the island. News of the project riled up Beijing on Monday. Chinese state media accused Australia of becoming an overseas bomber base of the U.S., Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese didn't directly respond when asked about the issue. We engage with our friends in the United States Alliance. Uh, the, from time to time, there are visits, of course, uh, to Australia and uh, of including uh, in, in Darwin uh, that has US Marines, of course, on a rotating basis uh, stationed there. We didn't have this Earlier with this Biden month, with Australia signed a new security deal with Japan. Both countries called for peace across the Taiwan Strait. China's communist leader, Xi Jinping, had said during the recent Communist Party Congress that he would never rule out the use of force to take over Taiwan. The U.S. may soon maintain a weaker military presence in Japan, but four lawmakers are questioning the move that would make it happen. The U.S. Air Force plans to withdraw a number of F-15 fighter jets from the Kadena Air Base in Japan starting this month. The jets are being retired. To take their place, the Air Force is considering whether to deploy more capable aircraft permanently. 
but the old jets would still be taken out of service without time to replace them. The plan has triggered concerns, mainly that the move would create a void for U.S. military force in Japan. The Pentagon responded on Tuesday. The U.S. commitment to Japan and regional security uh, and the defense of Japan remains ironclad. Since World War II, Japan is not legally allowed to have a military, though it does keep a self-defense force. The U.S. is the leading force that defends Japan. The European Union is sending out a warning about China. The bloc's industry chief says European governments and companies must realize Beijing is a rival of the EU and that Europe should not be naive when approving Chinese investment. Here are the details. European Commissioner Thierry Breton said we need to be extremely vigilant. Breton said the EU had adopted a series of measures to block Chinese investment in critical infrastructure since the EU labelled China a systematic rival in 2019. He said it's now up to the member states to use them. His comments appear to be aimed in part at Germany, whose Chancellor Olaf Scholz will visit Beijing on Friday. Germany recently decided to approve the sale of a stake in the country's largest port in Hamburg. Now Germany is getting with China, China company, giving support baffling many diplomats. For your ship. Chancellor Schultz was in favor despite strong pushback from his governing coalition partners. Schultz's visit to Beijing will be the first by an EU leader since the start of the COVID-19 I think we could, pandemic. should cut ties with China. In North, North Korea, Korea fired at least 17 missiles into the ocean on Wednesday. One of them landed less than 37 miles off South Korea's coast. The incident prompted South Korea to issue rare air raid warnings and launch its own missiles in response. Let's zoom in. North Korea fired at least 17 missiles into the sea on Wednesday. Seoul says one of them landed less than 38 miles off South Korea's coast and for the first time crossed a disputed maritime border which is outside of South Korea's Korea territorial and China waters. Both are testing the apparent missile tests triggered air raid signals on the South Korean island of Oolong. South Korean President Yoon Shuk Yul called it an effective act of territorial encroachment. Military chiefs in Seoul voiced alarm at the latest development. This North Korean missile launch, which marks the first time since the division of the peninsula that has landed near our territorial waters south of the northern limit line, is very rare and we can never tolerate it. Our military will firmly respond to it. In response, North South Korea really scrambled fighter jets that fired three air-to-ground missiles across the maritime border. Japan also condemned Pyongyang's missile tests on Wednesday. Its defense chief said a complaint was lodged with Beijing through diplomatic channels. <laughs> Wednesday's launch comes after a warning from Pyongyang of powerful follow-up measures if the U.S. and South Korea didn't stop large-scale joint air drills. Those went ahead with hundreds of warplanes, including F-35 stealth fighters from both sides, staging mock attacks 24 hours a day. According to Seoul, the training was needed to counter potential threats Michigan may soon be subsidizing communist China. That's according to a new report. That's also despite the Biden administration considering Beijing the biggest long-term threat to the United States. A business deal funded by U.S. taxpayers may extend China's supply chain deep into the heart of America. Michigan is set to fund a Chinese battery maker to the tune of over $750 million. Michigan is not... It's not right. To build a $2.4 billion facility in Big Rapids. We and need create to cut, up to cut off jobs. from China, Funding North Korea, and Russia. $350,000 in subsidies for every job. But some are questioning if the project is the best use of tax money and if the plan aligns with Americans' values. We spoke with Charlie LaDuff, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist and Michigan Listen resident, this. on his report. You know, human infrastructure, schools, how about, you know, uh, physical infrastructure, roads, they're, ours are notoriously the worst in the country. It could go so many places. And again, um, trade deals are particularly raw in this part of the world because, you know, they didn't work. Here, where I live, first world workers have been turned into secondhand shoppers in one generation. And then you add in to the fact that we're now subsidizing the communists. That... 
you know how we grew up around here. You know, you're taught we, we, we don't like communism much. And now it's corporate socialism. And who is this company? That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing. Okay, now, you know, Michigan is sending money to China. And th their people need jobs. You know, it's keep it here. Keep the money here is what I say. A shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here